Good <laughs> job. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Die. Are you video camera? I got all yours. Can we get you? Sure. Act 2, Scene 3 may seem like an insignificant scene in the play because it does not have any upfront action, but it is actually one of the more important scenes in all of Macbeth. During this scene, Duncan is found dead, and Macbeth and Lady Macbeth must put on a pretense of not knowing what is going on in order to get away with Lady Duncan. The fact that they remain undiscovered in this scene is a turning point in the whole play because it is what leads to Macbeth becoming king and the later murders he plans and the fears of him that follows later on in the play. Lady Macbeth and Macbeth's characters both develop along the scene. They both realize what terrible things they can get away with, and this gives them a false sense of superiority that will later lead to their downfall. Macbeth's speech on line 68 is a perfect example of this statement that shows that they are sure of themselves. This also leads other characters, such as Malcolm and Donovan, to suspect that something bad is going on that it is better if they flee. This leaves Macbeth with even more of an advantage, at least for now. The scene symbolizes Macbeth's success and that the witches are and will be right. Malcolm and Donald Bain's decision to leave at the end of the scene even further proves this because they are just <coughs> allowing the prophecy to come true. This is Macbeth's first and probably biggest success. And to introduce people, we have Lady Macbeth, who later in the play, at the end, will for a short time play Banquo. <laughs> and then we have Malcolm and Macbeth and Lennox and Donald Bay. And I'm Macduff. up. <laughs> <laughs> and now, without further ado, two scenes for the Macbeth musical performed by Gangs Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Is that a master stirring? Our knocking has awakened him. Good morning, noble sir. Good morning, noble. Is the king stirring, worthy thing? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you drunk. I know this is a joyful trouble, but yet it is one. The labor will be the light and physic pain. This is the dark. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. So the king has today? He does. He didn't like that. The night was unruly as we lay. The chimneys were blown down, and as they say, lamenting, sir, I the heir, strange screams of death, and prophesied it with dire, with dire combustion and confused events. Clamored the live long night and the woke the obscure bird. Some say the earth was feverous and dead shape. It was a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel our fellow to it. Oh, horror! 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 Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's, What's the matter? matter? Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with the new Gorgon. But do not bid me speak. See, and then speak yourselves. What is it you say? The light? Mean you his majesty? <laughs> Ring the alarm bell. <laughs> Don't obey. Now go. Awake! <laughs> Speak! Speak! Oh, gentle lady, it is not for me to speak what you can hear. The repetition in a woman's ears would murder as it fell. Your royal master is murdered. Whoa! Alas! What in our house? Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time. For from this instant, there's nothing more serious in mortality. All is but lost, renown and grace is dead. Oh, when the wine of life is drawn, merely the blessed vault to break up. Oh my 
God. Warning that that's which steals itself when there's no mercy. 